Hello everyone, and welcome back to Quest for Glory 4, where I just remembered what it was I have to do. And I almost did it, and then I did Walking in the land of dreams, searching for something. You sense the nearness of Irana, and feel her gentle presence beside you. You turn to her and see tears in her eyes. You feel sorrow and an incredible sense of loss and reach out for her. As the vision resumes, the darkness swallows her and she is torn from you. You feel her die as she tries to drive the darkness away. The darkness is trapped in the world between worlds. So is Irana. <laughs> oh boy. <coughs> you gradually wake, shaking off the shreds of dreams that cling to your memory. All right, let's go do this thing. So we do act. If we do have time to move, no. say about no. Mordavia is that it is never dull. Be careful out there. So we do, uh, we do actually need to go talk to the gnome. I was wrong. Um, I think that the vision that Magda has isn't until after you've done it. She she has a vision of you doing it. Off to a good start in the morning. You know? Especially when everything's laced with garlic. Right? Everything's laced with garlic around here. Like, literally just everything is laced with freaking garlic. Why does everything have to have freaking garlic? Oh my god, the garlic. <laughs> oh, whoops. I tried to open the door instead of knock. A voice so, I mean, that was new dialogue, but What's I missed it. What's the difference between burning a ghost and burning a steak? <coughs> Toasting a ghost, the other is roasting a steak. Hey. Hello, You're funny. You're so often I ought to charge admission. Gotta make some All right. So... Uh, all of this is the same. So, what I missed was... The chicken seems to be made out of rubber. <coughs> What's rubber, you ask? You also consider how it would taste cooked in garlic. The rubber chicken squeals as you pick it up and squeeze it. Well, you'll have to keep her now. You obviously rub her the right way. Rub her, get it? There we go. So I says to you, what do you say to a 20-ton dragon that just stepped on you? Not tonight. I got a headache. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. Okay, that was funny. I've never heard that one before. Uh, I've never interacted with Punny Bones as much in any playthrough of this as I have in this Let's Play. So that's funny. All right, so we have everything we need. We just need to find ourselves one elderberry bush. Should be not along here. I am definitely in the wrong sp place. Oh crap! Get off of me! Necrotars are easily the hardest enemy in the game. Easily. It's not just they're like... It's not so much that they're hard. It's just that they're, they hit so hard, you know? They're not difficult to kill. It's just they hit you so hard. You know? Uh oh. Oh my god, wyverns. I get it. Nope. Oh, there you go. 
That zap spell. Not that we're gonna use it. Correct. Well, we have the zap spell for later now. Bam. All right, take a quick 60-minute rest so we have some stamina. I don't remember where to go because I don't have a map, but I found There's it. There's something strange about this bush. Maybe it's the eyes. Oh, forget it. It's probably just an ordinary, everyday bush with blood-red berries and tentacle-like branches. I think we've read that before, but I don't care. Whack! 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 There we go. You've managed to knock a branch with some berries loose from the bush. Got it. So There's yeah, something uh, they're not kidding when they say tentacle-like branches. <laughs> and then, this, uh, this might sound weird, but he's going to put the rubber chicken down on the ground. You strip the berries from the loose branch and carefully store them in a pocket in your backpack. <laughs> and the elderberry bush goes back to where it was. All right, and we take some elderberries, put them in the bu put them in the pie. Toss the elderberries into the pie tin. Uh, pan is filled with a sticky red assemblage of poisonous elderberry elderberries. The pan has been thoroughly greased with glue, glue, and you ground up human bones make up the flour of the pan. Cool. Sounds tasty. Let's eat it. It looks tempting, but you really don't want to eat it. You're really more partial to pumpkin pie. Aw, can't eat it. I didn't think you could, but I figured I'd try. You know, I didn't, I've never tried eating the elderberries. I wonder if you can, like, kill yourself. Or if they just poison you. I mean, either way, you probably just completely screw up and then you can't get um, more berries, but... Bing! Every sense tingles with the feeling of danger. The eye... I thought I lost that ability. <laughs> I don't think it works. I don't think the whole danger sense earning and not just losing and stuff works properly. So, did you get it? Show me. I won't let you in without it. Looking good. Now show it to the head skull over there and get out of the way fast if you don't want to add rump roast to the Baba's menu for tonight. My chair is... Uh, falling? Hang on a second. Like, I don't know, I, I have one of those chairs that you can like raise up and down and I was just sitting here and just all of a sudden it was literally just the going down. The stop flashing their lasers. <laughs> you pick up the pie. It's been cooked to a delicate golden brown. I hey, don't legs. think Squat. that should work. I don't think a laser is gonna cook the pie evenly. Feel a sense of menace and the sensation of being watched. You quickly step out from under the trap. A moment later, you hear the voice of Baba Yaga. Not very trusting, is he, kids? Good, it's not like I trust him. Floor quick, make him stick. You find your shoes stuck to the floor. Spirits of the swamp and mire, aid me in what I desire. Creatures of the mist, beings of the fog, turn this human into a cute hedgehog. <laughs> I love her chants. Help. I have a sudden craving for a tiggly wiggly. Perhaps some hedgehog grog, hedge piggly swiggly, and pig newtons. 
what's that you say? Elderberry pie. Oh, darn. He was bringing that here, wasn't he? I don't suppose a piggly wiggle can get the pie from his backpack, could he? Particularly if his feet are stuck to the floor. Oh, pity. Spirits of the mist and moor, restore this man as he was before. We. Oui. So, now my dining delight, do you have what I asked for? Of course. Tell her about the pie. Tell about how you made the pie. Well, that's all very well and good, but until I have my elderberry pie in hand, you are in serious danger of staying for a supper. Get it? Fine, fine. Here you go. Mmm, that smells delicious. Just the way we like it. Fresh from the fire. So, let me think. How should I reward you for such a lovely pie? Mm -hmm. Well, kitty, should we just fry him now, or for an entree have green spleen casserole with the roast leg of man? <laughs> oh, all right, I suppose he did do us a favor. It wouldn't be polite to eat him now. Besides, he may be useful in the future. So what is it that you want as a reward for your lovely pie? <clears throat> tell about the gnome's humor. You tell about the gnome and how he wants his humor back. Humor, is it? You want a sense of humor? I'm not sure the gnome really had a sense of humor. Making fun of poor old ogresses. Oh, all right. Take this good humor bar and give it to the gnome. I suppose there is nothing more pathetic than a gnome who can't tell a joke. You take the good humor bar and put it away. <laughs> You've got what you wanted, and I've got what we wanted. Tasty treat, now retreat. Bing. Well, I guess she liked the pie, or you would have taken its place. <laughs> Yay, we have a good humor bar. Eh, yeah, go on in and find out we... Nope. If I didn't know you better, I'd be pretty jealous right now. I've got nothing new to say to him. Bye-bye. Alright, well... That, uh, that's it. We have done it. You sneak a tiny taste of the good humor bar. It tastes kind of funny. Wow. All right. We can head on back to Moldavia. Or the town, rather. God, all these places just look and uh, start they start looking the same as you wander around. Right. Tack. Tack, tack, attack. Oh. Why did you just stop attacking? Oh, I ran out of stamina, that's why. Ah! Help! Ow! Got him. <laughs> I like that we were both being damaged there. In that moment. <coughs> Alright, let's take a quick rest. Get some stamina bake. Gonna need to actually sleep here pretty quick, but 
Knock on the door. Zap it her. From behind her. You have just gained the paladin ability to sense the presence of danger. Did I tell you about the time there was this guy walking into an inn with this big necrotor following him? He <coughs> went to the innkeeper and asked for some stew to eat. The innkeeper looks nervously at the necrotor and asks the man what his pet will eat. And the guy replies, anyone he wants. <laughs> Not bad, eh? And the gnome, the good humor. <laughs> Here, take it. What's this? You trying the old hot pepper bar on me? Hey, I'm the professional, kid. Don't try this at home. Not on a gnome, anyway. Hey, it looks good, though. He eats the good humor bar. Not bad. Pretty good, actually. Hey, I feel funny. I mean, really funny. What was that thing? You tell the gnome about Baba Yaga <laughs> and the good humor bar. Thanks, pal. Guess this yuck's on me. This jester just can't thank you too much. You're my hero, Nero. My main man, Stan. Yay! We saved the gnome. So you got by with a pie, aye? My, my. Always knew the way to Baba's heart was through her stomach. Probably someone she ate. You know what they say about cannibals? Always having a few friends over for dinner. R.I.P. Asked about I'm no? so happy that it reminds me of the time Dimlit the Dwarf came across a magic ring in the bazaar in Shapir. He rubbed it, and lo and behold, out comes a genie. I will grant you three wishes, said the genie. Well, for my first wish, I want a place that's always filled with gold, says Dim. <coughs> so shall it be done, said the genie. There before Dimlit appeared a place. He turned it over, and a pile of gold spilled out on the desert sand. Again and again he turned it over, and more and more gold covered the ground. Master, you do have two more wishes left, said the genie. Oh, that's right, said the dwarf. Well, give me two more of these. Let me tell you, I'm every bit as happy as Dimlet was. Wow. You know what they say about humor? If you don't got it, you won't get it. And if you don't get it, I'm sure someone will try to explain it at great length. <laughs> yep. Yep. A flying rumor never has any trouble making a landing. I heard that the shopkeeper's husband left her because she was such a scold. She was a person who was quick on the floor. When she wanted his opinion, she gave it to him. Yep. Do you know why gnome jokes are so short? So that they won't go over the dwarves' heads! Wow. There's no point in telling a dwarf a joke with a double meaning. He won't get either one. <laughs> Judging from the expression, what you don't know can't hurt you, dwarves are practically invulnerable. <laughs> right? Dwarves, far be it for me to say that all dwarves are just plain dumb. Most are pretty greedy, too. Dwarves get their money the hoard way. They won't even spend the time of day. Dwarves don't care how people treat them, as long as they do. <laughs> of course, you know what you got when the singing dragon fell into the dwarf mine. A flat miner. And on that note, let's change <laughs> the subject. Oh, I love it. Well, now that I'm back in the funny business, it's one more show and I'm back on the road. I'm going to show these yokels that he who laughs last just didn't get it. Right? I did jokes you know is the why one. Gnome jokes? Yeah. I said jokes is the one that he where he was telling all the jokes, so. Some people spread happiness wherever they go. Others, whenever they go. Fortunately, you are the former. If you was the latter, you'd probably have a few rungs missing. Before you blow, Joe, I figure I owe you one. I'm gonna let you in on a secret only we gnomes know. I'm gonna tell you the ultimate joke. Don't wince, Vince. This is straight, mate. You tell this one, and whoever hears it is gonna laugh. Really laugh. Can't help it, can't stop it kind of laugh works once and should only be used in last resorts, Mort. It's the last laugh, so to speak. The best jest to the West. Yours for the telling. The noon tells you a rather <coughs> joke. You find yourself laughing despite yourself. See what I mean, Gene? Tell this joke to a big bad dude that's out to do you in, then exit while he's laughing. Use it or lose it. Bye-bye, birdie!
Yay! We now know the ultimate joke. Um, if I go into my room and come out, is the gnome going to be there? He does do one more show, as he said. Okay, it, does, it has to be evening. That's fine. We can make it evening pretty simply. Since we need the rest anyway. Because uh, take a look at my health and my stamina. Oh my god. Uh, also, what is our... Oh, right. I haven't been on the screen during the uh, afternoon there, have I? That's great. Uh, my honor is back to 276, so yay. Knock on the door. So Dimitri says the gypsy didn't really kill Igor after all. Aye. Then there's that one about the Easter Bunny. Boy, you didn't hear? Oh, that foolish grave digger fell into a grave, and he was trapped by his own gravestone. He's dumber than a styrofoam cup. Right. It's just lucky for Igor the stranger happened to wander by before he starved to death. You are all fortunate that this stranger rescued Igor. You would have burned an innocent man. Well, I still think the gypsy's a werewolf. Hey, talk about gypsy so you found Igor in the grave. Whew. Lucky for old Eeg, you came along. Otherwise, poor little Iggy would be dead. Well, at least he had a decent burial. So that is the thing. Uh, if you don't find Igor within like a day. Um, you can find well, Igor in the graveyard dead. Gypsy returned to his people, I suppose. So. Yeah, that gypsy camp is somewhere to the east of town, by the shopping mall. By the shopping still mall? still think the punk was a werewolf. They're all paranoid. Did you ever see him turn into a wolf? Well, no. Did he have hairy hands or pointy ears like Leonard Nimoy? Well, no. You see... It's all your fault, blathering on about those stupid, foolish folk tales while we could have harmed an innocent man. Yeah, I knew all along there's no such thing as werewolves. Aye, aye. Well, Gravedigger returned to town safely and he can get back to his job overcharging us for those Fakakta gravestones. Yeah, he's even got full medical and dental. After all, the grave digger not the line at all. work all the time, so to speak. That, that, that is, that's not the line? Well, things ought to settle back to abnormal now. What with our little buddy Igor returning and all. <laughs> we can go back to being open and friendly. And as always, suspicious of Strangers. I mean, don't be suspicious with me. I was the one that Never saved you, but so many locks and bars. It is. If you okay, if I leave and come back. I'm sure that uh, it will clear the Igor very thing, and we'll get putty bones this time. There you go. So you're back. No, it's your front. Take a seat. No, take two. That's small. I got a joke just for you, so don't look so sheepish. I like this one. This is my this is my favorite set of uh, jokes by the gnome. I use some of these still so quite regularly. And all you others, I'd like to say how glad I am to be here. I'd like to say it. Seriously, folks, staying at the Hotel Mordavia has been like staying at a resort, a last resort. My room is so small, the mice are hunchback. I couldn't even complain about the room service. There wasn't any to complain about. And the innkeeper's wife really went out of her way to make me feel at home. She ignored me completely. 
I wasn't feeling well, so I went <coughs> to visit the local doctor. You know, Dr. Cranium. He's the guy with the three pairs of glasses, one for nearsightedness, one for farsightedness, and one to look for the other two. I said to the doctor, my heart keeps making a strange noise. It keeps going tick, tick, tick. Aha, said Dr. Cranium. We have ways of making you talk. Next, I went to visit the local store. If you don't know what's up, then you haven't seen their prices lately. And the shopkeeper, what a gossip. She suffers from acute indiscretion. I dislike repeating gossip, but uh, what else can you do with it? And boy, oh boy, the monster's in this place. If I ever come face to face with a revenant, I know what steps I take. Long ones. What would I do if ever I saw a necrotor? Hope it didn't see me. Actually, folks, I'm up here for a good reason. A jester's ambition is to be healthy, wealthy, and wisecracking. If it weren't for my friend the hero over there, I couldn't make a hyena laugh. So, when you've lost your wit, broken your funny bone, and none of your puns are fun, it helps to have a hero handy. You know, that reminds me very little of the story about the grave digger who was so bored, he buried himself in his work. You know, I could tell you some more jokes, but you'd only laugh at them. So, <coughs> be good. If you can't be good, then be careful. The gnome takes a deep bow and gets down off the stage. That's funny, you always thought he got down off a duck. Ha! Ah, the townspeople explode into spontaneous applause. Keep smiling, it makes people wonder what you've been up to. So, was that funny or are you just keeping your mouth shut? Hey. It's Talk good to, to have my wit about me again. Nothing worse than someone who can't take a joke or one that tries to tell one and can't. Before you help me, when I told a joke, people always clapped their hands. Unfortunately, it was always over their ears. Now, whenever I tell a joke, I get carried away. So I'm leaving before they ride me out of town on a nail. <laughs> a short joke there. Okay. I wonder what was what's up with the dialogue here. Did you hear the one about the dwarf? Or that so one, dumb, anyway. He always stops to think and then forgets to start again. Everything that's said to him goes in one ear and out the other. There's nothing there to block traffic. I can tell dwarf jokes all day, mainly because there are none around <laughs> to stop me. Right? <laughs> I in love dwarf minute, jokes. I'm gonna say my bye bye and fly. I'm going south for the winter, down where the nights are balmy, and so am I. Heading for Silmaria, land of winter waterland, where there's no snow nor cold wind to blow. Up here, the winter is so cold, even the wind howls about it. Off to Silmaria, huh? Your voice is lost in the noise of the crowd, and the gnome doesn't seem to have heard you. Heading off to Silmaria. All right there, Penny Bones. You unlock. I'll well, see you later. It's so long, it's been nice to know you. I like you. I have no taste, but I like you. If you ever make it to Silmaria, look me up. I never forget a friend, especially if he owes me money. But seeing as how it's me that owes you one, I'd better get while the going's good. See ya. Don't take any wooden kopecks. So everyone, I'll leave you with this story. A man runs up to his doctor and says, Doc, you gotta help me. I keep thinking I'm a goat. The doctor asked, how long have you had this delusion? The guy replied, ever since I was a kid. But the boom. Aye. That just goats to show you I'm one bad dude. It's been sheer pleasure here, but I'm gonna take it on the lamb and just bleed it. Be seeing you. <laughs> Aye. I love his jokes. I really do. All right, one last dream, a shiver, and then I'll call it an episode. It is a whoop. Yeah, nope, I knew that. I kind of figured that was what it would be. Um, actually, I'll just call it an episode here. We'll just watch the dream in the next episode. So I do hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to check the video description down below for a link to the playlist so that you can get caught up on any episodes you might have missed. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. See you later.